All right, excellent. Well, it's official, we're recording. It's 10.04 Pacific Standard Time on a Friday, May 22nd. So let's go around uh, the room here and see those of you that were up for the 50, 50 call chat. So if you did all 50, hold up five. If you did 40, hold up four. If you did 30, you hold up three. If you did 20, you hold up two. And if you did 10, you hold up one finger, but be really careful which finger you show me, okay? <laughs> All right, let's see our 50s first, 50. Who did 50? 50 or more calls this last week. Hold up your hand. Nobody did 50 or more? 50, 50, All right. <laughs> I'm gonna lower the standards, <laughs> 40. Who held up, hold up your hand if you did 40 or more? 40 or more calls. 40 or more calls this last week. Crystal, Crystal, you did 40? Great, okay, 30, 30 or more, 30 or more. What was that, Deborah? That was it, that was it. Okay, 30 or more, nobody did 30 or more? You did 30, Deborah? okay. Uh, 20, 20 or more. Okay, so what have you guys been doing all week? <laughs> 10, no, that was my finger, 10 or more calls. Okay, Sydney, thank you for being honest. <laughs> Zero calls this last week. No, okay, Tony. Two. You did two. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is fascinating. I love it because I keep getting messages like, we need more phone numbers. <laughs> what do you need phone numbers for? You're not calling anyone. All right. So let's talk about mailers, right? Have you guys been sending out mailers? Just not yes or yes, mailers, mailers. Okay, good. So no this mailers, is the week where you did an email. Okay, email, mailers, good, on, right on, okay. All right, so um, let's, just, let's just call for what it is. The 50 call challenge was, uh, didn't hit our marks. So now you sent out letters. Um, are you gonna do 50 calls by next week? Yes. Okay, Deborah said yes. All right, we're getting some nods, okay. Fran, you're in too, good, Clara's in. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm in. Okay, who's that? That's Peter. Peter, okay, Peter, oh, there you are. All right, great. So um, let's, uh, okay, who was that? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, all right. So put in the, oh, Tony's in too, put in the chat or just, uh, you can unmute yourself, that's fine too. Or if your video is on, just kind of raise your hand, say you're in. Um, Shelly or Shell said, I didn't sign up for the challenge, but I made calls, that's great. Peter said, I didn't sign up for it, but I did make one call. <laughs> who would you call, Martine? <laughs> in the next room? All right. So, uh, why is this one not joining in? Here we go. All right, Glenn Henderson's trying to get in. Okay, so here's, here's the thing about habits, right? We all know we have good habits and bad habits. And the bottom line in getting rid of your bad habits and increase your good habits is this. If all you take away from today's meeting about improving your habits is this one thing. You gotta make, you gotta make it harder and more difficult to continue your bad habits and you gotta make it easy to start better and new habits. That's it, that's the foundation. Make the things that you want more of in life and better habits in life to get you better results and make those easier. I'm gonna talk about in detail how to do that. And the things you wanna get rid of, the things, the habits that you're doing right now that you don't want, make those harder so what are some examples so for me for example bad habits was was a lot of youtube a lot of netflix binge watching um not exercising enough those are bad habits so for example when i and i started reading this book so so getting rid of bad habits i noticed like i had a routine and i had a routine it wasn't so much a, a, there was no thought into it it would just be like well i'm done with working uh and uh, i have an hour between i start my daddy duties let me just turn on the let me just watch something on Netflix just to kind of tune out a little bit or before going to bed. And I noticed it just took away a lot of time and I noticed I didn't sleep well at night. So in order to make it harder for me to watch Netflix at the end of the day, I took Netflix off my phone. I changed the password to Netflix on Netflix and I, and I made sure that I couldn't get into Netflix. Then two days later, I found out there was YouTube. Then I said, I'm just gonna start watching YouTube. So I start finding out like these things that are, are bad habits that I, that I consider bad. And again, bad and good is not a moral judgment. It's about what you want for your life and the habits that are good for you. And the thing that we all know about is like, 
the number one thing, there's three things everybody is looking for is better health, better relationships and better wealth, right? In relationships, they want, them, they want to improve the one they're in or they want to find someone to love. In health, it's usually the big one is always weight loss and then improve your health. And in wealth, it's always this one, like making more money or improving the income that you have. And whatever it is that you do, whatever, whatever action you're taking, I posted this on Facebook the other day, every action you take is a vote, uh, is a vote you cast towards the person you want to become. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's the foundation, right? Bad habits make it harder to, uh, to do them. So my Netflix example, I got rid of that. I got rid of YouTube. I, I deleted all the apps in my phone that would make me easily distract. And then the things that I want to do, well, if I have this one hour time, what I want to do, I want to read. So I installed Kindle on my phone and I had the Kindle nearby, right next to my computer. Or if I decide I'm going to go for a walk and get change my scenery, I would go for a 15 minute walk, find a bench and sit down and read and come back. And that was my hour, right? Um, I think Tony Robbins called this your power hour. We can call it whatever you want, whatever gets you into that state of mind. So I made the good habit easy by just placing the Kindle right next to me and then my shoes to go for a walk right next to my desk. And then I knew when I clocked out, I just looked over, oh, that triggers the good habit and I got out of that. So make good habits easier. Another thing is video games, right? I, I don't know if you guys are playing video games. So for some people that watch too much TV or play too much video games, they literally unplug their console, put it in the closet so that if the thought comes, oh, I'm going to play video games, it's like, I got to go to the closet. I got to bring it out. I got to plug it back in. I got to reload the whole thing. It's too much hassle. So that's the thing with habits, right? So think about a habit that you want to start and think about a habit that you want to stop. So write these two things, a habit I would like to start and a habit I would like to be, um, that I would like to stop, stop and start. Um, just write those two down and then keep them in mind. <laughs> the cherry pie is so distracting. <laughs> That's right, Martin. Cliff, your background is distracting our people today. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, but uh, was, just, you know, it's a holiday weekend. I we're just messing with you. you. Put whatever you want up there. It's, yeah, I think everyone's, <laughs> people, people think about that. That's the habit I want to get rid of is eating sweets, too many sweets. Um, so, so that's, that's the beginning. So now I want to introduce you to the framework that we're working with here. This is by James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits. So um, what's a framework? A framework is the way that you, you see the world. So there's three things, a framework, mindset, and skill set, the way I look at it. Framework is how you see the world. Mindset is how you think about the world. And skill set is what you do about it, what you do with it, what you just learn from that. So I'm going to open up this uh, real quick here. Whoa, there we go. And um, where do I want to start with this? All right, here we go. Okay, you guys see my screen all right? I'm gonna make this, whoa, this is way too big. What's going on? So here's, here's a general flow of how this usually works, right? By the way, has anyone uh, here read um, Atomic Habits by James Clear? If you have, just put it in the chat or, or not. Yes, I can't see everyone's faces right now because I got the screen sharing going on. Um, but if you have, if you've read it and you have something you want to add, just go ahead and raise your hand or, or put it in the chat or just unmute yourself. Uh, it'd be great if we can kind of collaborate on this. So here's why I love this book. You know, he talks about outcomes, processes, and identity. So there's, there's three levels that you can look at, the three layers of behavior change. Outcomes is what we get when the behavior is there, process is how we get there, and identity is who we are, right? So we look at the outcome and say, well, I want this, and then what, what is this thing that I want, whether it's better health, a new car, a new house, travel more, um, find love, whatever the thing is that I want in life, make, improve my business, whatever the thing is, right? Um, it's an outcome. So we look at the outcome and go, okay, to get this outcome, what processes do I need in place? And then you start implementing the processes and then that reaffirms who you really are and go, well, I am now this because I got that. So we, it's, it's kind of like looking at as if I, once I have this, I can do these certain things, the processes. So once I have the new house, right, I can, I can, I can, uh, uh, um, 
I can eventually, I, I, I can confirm that I am now house owned, that's the identity, and I can be relaxed, I can be happy, I can be fulfilled, right? So it's always very outcome based. So there's two approaches in going to this outcome here. And, and stay with me, we'll get to the, the, your habits that you guys wanna build. So outcomes, processes, and identities, identity, right? So the outcome based approach is this. Uh, I look at the outcome that I wanna have, step one. I figure out my processes in step two. And then step three, that gives me a sense of identity. So what's the problem with this model? It what's should the be the way around. Okay, Fabian, very good. So what, Fabian, what do you mean by that? That you first need to seek your identity so that you can have a clear picture of what the process will be so that you can achieve a, an outcome, a result. Exactly. Here's, here's the challenge, right? And this is, and this is we, all, <clears throat> we all in the Western world live in this model because we, we, we've been told and we've been taught and we've been demonstrated to us that, um, you, number one, you have a right to pursue happiness, of course. The problem pursuing happiness is pursuit. You're always pursuing, right? And number two, if you're always looking at an outcome to figure yourself out, it's never going to end. You'll never figure yourself out. And you'll never find peace. You'll never be fulfilled. There's always something that someone else is doing or having or doing or getting that you get attracted to and that now it pulls you out of your state, it brings you out of your equilibrium and out of your center, so to speak. So like Fabian, exactly like he mentioned, he nailed it. It should be the other way around. So the outcome-based habits will always have you striving for more and more and more, but you don't know why. And then I don't know if anyone's ever been there. I mean, I'm 45, I've been there for a while. <laughs> I've been there, I've done that <clears throat> where I've achieved and accomplished the outcomes that I wanted to have, <clears throat> excuse me. And I got it and there was an excitement, there was adrenaline and there was all that going. And then a week or two or a month later, there was like, I saw another peak, another mountain that I wanted to climb or something else. And then you get a little tired after a while, you figure out what's, what's the point and you can't get out of this, this, this rat race, so to speak. So that's outcome-based habits. The identity-based habits ask the question, with identity-based habits, the focus is on who you wish to become rather than what you want to have, what you want to achieve. So when we start from, like Fabian mentioned, is when we start at the center, at the very, very center is identity. Who am I? Who am I? And what's the, the point of this? And what, what kind of, how do I define meaning in my life? And what are my responsibilities? What is it that I want to impact in this world? What do I want to do about that, right? So in order to figure out that identity, um, you say, okay, I am here today. So let's say we go back to the big three, right? It's, uh, it's relationship, it's health and wealth. Those are the big three. If you look at anything that's being sold anywhere online, it's a derivative, derivative of one of those three, right? So let's say, for example, um, if I want to be healthier, that's an identity thing. <clears throat> Whether it's you want to lose weight, you want to have more strength, you want to be more flexible, in, in throughout my life, I had different health goals for different reasons at different times. At one point, I wanted to become a yogi. So I went really into Ashtanga yoga and I did a lot of that. And I went on retreats and I got teachers and I got that. And I felt really good about that approach until I realized I was becoming competitive because I started comparing myself to others. And I went back to my identity and I said, why did I want that? Right. Uh, another time in my health was maybe weight loss, you know. Um, because I knew it wasn't so much about losing weight. It was more about, I want to be healthy. What does a healthy person do? So now that goes into step two, step two is like, okay, if I want to be this identity, I'm not there yet. Or maybe I'm overweight or maybe I'm not flexible enough. Maybe I'm not strong enough in whatever my health goal is. Then what does an athlete do to, to get to that? So then I started surrounding myself and looking for things in my environment that will help me figure out those processes. The same thing is true for you and your business. Whatever you want for yourself and your business and in real estate is the same thing that you want, hopefully aligns with what you want in life. Because if they don't, there's, a, there's a, uh, a competing commitments, right? Your business want one thing, but your heart wants something else. So hopefully what you want for yourself and in your life is aligning with what you want in your business and then one supports the other, right? And that's, that's what like Tony Robbins talks about that gives you in that state of where you can get it done. And then once you figure out your process, even step two here in the second concentric circle, if you get the outcomes and this way the outcomes matches who you already are and who you want to become it's not so much what you want to figure out who you are you guys with me on this that makes sense yes elizabeth is saying it be do have exactly 
once you you just be what you want then you'll have what you want in life and then uh and then you, you can do what you want in life and then you'll have the things that confirm that so the thing about habits let me just um ba -ba 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 -ba. And this is a really stellar graph. 1% every day better. You guys see the whole chart? <clears throat> this, is, this, this blew my mind. If I get 1% worse every day for one year, I end up close to zero. You guys see that? I end up right here. And that's the graph. Like if I had no improvement, it's the dotted line right here. That's just me doing nothing. I'm not getting better. I'm not getting worse. I'm just status quo all the time. Nothing happening, right? If I decline 1% worse every day for one year, I end up close to zero. But guys, look at this. Look at the upside. If I improve 1% a year, I'm sorry, 1% per day for one year, I end up at this number is just math, right? 37 times better than when I started off. So the, the, forget about the math and the numbers, but just think about this. There's a 37 times improvement in your life if you improve yourself at 1% every day. So 1% in my case was, the first percent was delete the, the apps off my phone so I don't get attracted to Netflix. And then I got to sit with that restlessness of that one hour, like, oh, what do I do with that? Then maybe the next, the next day is like, well, go for a walk. Maybe the next day is like, read a book, then figure out, okay, Figure out your identity. Why do I want to walk? Why do I want to read a book? What am I educating myself? All these things that I'm doing with my new habits is to reaffirm my identity. So, <laughs> Sydney's saying, I also practice Ashtanga. I see how that can become competitive. Yeah, that's actually funny. It's, it's uh, you know, I was in these yoga studios and I was looking around me. I was, I was, I was, I was checking out the men, not for that reason, you know, there was mostly women, but it was also men. I was checking out the men and I was like, how far can he bend? How far can he stretch? How long can he hold his pose? I'm going to beat him. And I was like, this is completely, <laughs> this is not what yoga is all about, right? So let me see, there's one other graph I want to show you here. So I, want, I don't want to do a full book report here, but there's one. You guys, do you guys want these slides? Would that be helpful? No? Let's see here. So let's, let's bring this back to um, the habit loop here. And he talks a little about the four stages of a habit, right? There's a cue, there's a craving, response, and reward. So I'll let you guys read the book yourself, but this is something that you also can watch. The cue is usually something that, that it's a trigger. It's something that happens. And then, it, 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 and then you get a craving inside, it, inside of you as something you want to do. And then you respond to it one way or the other, and then you get the reward, right? And that's the loop. And then with, with good habits, you want to make this easy. With bad habits, you want to make it difficult. So you guys wrote down a habit that you want to begin, um, and a good habit that you want to begin, and a bad habit or poor habit that you want to stop. So I'm just curious uh, who is, who would be willing to share either a good habit or a bad habit. And then we'll get into real estate, and then we'll get into the numbers, and I'll show you the calculator. But let's, let's, get, let's close this idea around the framework on habits. Did anyone, did you guys wrote down a um, good habit and a bad habit? No one's brave enough? Well, the, the habit I want to stop is in Hold on, Nick, my, uh, Nick is going, go ahead. Yeah, the, the habit I want to stop is in between my prospecting costs to stop watching YouTube. Ah, been, okay, welcome uh, to my world. I've been stuck with uh, this new Justin Bieber song with uh, Christina Guerrero. I must have listened to it 20 times. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where's your YouTube installed? Is it on your computer? Or is it's on it, my uh... computer. It's on my phone as well. I got it here yeah. sometimes. I got to okay. take it. Maybe it's better to just take it off or just find the discipline. Yeah, so there's two things you can do, right? You can, uh, you can delete it from your phone, and then you can get... Um, you could you can get like a parental control installed on your on your computer <laughs> and, just good. and just and just block, block YouTube, it. right because there's my... there's there's that childish like i want it i gotta have it and then, you know it's like i yeah. see my kids when they they see that we buy chocolate they're like we got it we want it we want it that's the <laughs> thing inside of you that's like just put some parental control on your on your on your cravings you know that's true i'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna get that book though. i've been meaning i've had that that on my list for a while the atomic habits i just gotta go purchase it yeah, Atomic Habits, go get it. It's, it's such a great book, yeah. Thanks so much. 
Yeah, thank you. Who's the other person I wanted to share? Well, um, I am dyslexic. So one of the things I want to do is cut off the TV and uh, practice reading and spelling each day. How can you make that easier? How can, you, how, can you, how can you stop watching TV? That's a bad habit, right? That's the thing you want to stop. How can you make it more difficult? Just cut it off. Don't do it. That's not good enough. <laughs> you got to make it harder. Just don't do it. You don't have the willpower right now. I'm not saying you, but just think about it. Okay, if you had the willpower, you'd already be practicing reading. But because we don't have the willpower, the thing with habits is once you've, once you've turned something, once you've pushed through with your willpower and it's become a habit, you don't need willpower anymore. That's the definition of a habit. It just goes on autopilot. Right now, your autopilot probably is um, you just start watching TV. That's the autopilot. So to break that autopilot, you need to unplug the TV and put it in the closet, put it in a different room, put it somewhere else. So if you actually say, oh, I'm just going to watch TV, like, oh, there's no TV. Then your brain says, well, I got to go to the room, pull it out of the closet. And then your way to doing that is like, actually, I should be reading a book. Okay. So, so make, make it difficult. The thing right. to say, I'm just going to stop doing it. If it was that easy, I wouldn't even be talking to this and this guy wouldn't have written a book and so on and so forth, you know? Okay, so um, the book about the habits is called Atomic Habits. I'm gonna put it in the, um, in the chat room. Uh, there's still someone in the waiting room, that's weird. Okay, Atomic Habits. Bye. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Can, yeah. uh, when you get a chance, can you please repeat what you just said about how to cut about a habit? Yeah, sure. So, th so the bad habit is <clears throat> something that you realize it's, it's impeding you from realizing and expressing the identity that you want to express, right? So it starts from the inside out. So in, uh, and I don't know, it's the gentleman just spoke, your, your name shows up as Bowles. I'm not sure if that's your name, but let's, I'll call you Bowles for now. So unmute yourself. What's your name? My name is Leon Bowles King, All right. and the Bowles is my wife's name, and King is my name. All right, so we'll call you Leon. Is that good? Yeah, that's great. All right. So what Leon was saying, well, I, I, I'm dyslexic. I want to start. I want to learn how to read, or I want to practice that, and I, I really want to get into a program with that. But the problem is, I watch TV. So I said, well, then what's the solution? Oh, I'll just stop watching TV. I said it's not that easy. Just stop watching TV because the TV is somewhere in your home that when you look at it, you think about it, or you walk by it, it triggers a behavior, and then all of a sudden you're on the couch watching TV. And you're like, I'll just, I'll just catch the news. And all of a sudden I'll just watch something else. And oh, I'll just go to Netflix. I'll just, and all of a sudden like two, three hours went by that you could have done something else. So my comment to Leon was, um, make it hard, make it difficult to watch TV, unplug the TV, uh, put it in a different room, hide the remote if you have to, or put it somewhere that's inconvenient, like somewhere in the bathroom drawer. Like, Guys, I know it sounds crazy, but you gotta, you gotta break that routine up. Um, so that's that. All right, so let's take a uh, question from Daniel, uh, Daniel Oropes. He's new and he says, I have a question of the list of leads that I emailed to us. Okay, so for those of you new, this is not usually, this is like every other week or two, two three weeks, I'll do something like this, but most of the time we'll dive into the data, we'll do searches, we'll talk about leads and talk, things, stuff like that. So Daniel, um, What's the question that you have, the list of cases that are emailed to you? Do you want to unmute yourself? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, I, the list, I just wanted to know if it was a combination of uh, a personal representatives that are out of state, in the state, they're, you know, and, and or what, what, what was that list compiled of? So is this, they, uh, <laughs> which, yeah, which county are you in? In San Diego. San Diego. So you're probably getting what's called historical prospecting leads because the, the, the court has been closed for a while, but they're, re, they're reopening soon. So what we've been doing is we've been emailing people cases that were filed 12, 18, 24 months ago, but where the property hasn't sold yet. So, that's a, so it's just across the board. That could be out-of-state petitioners, could be in-state, doesn't really matter. The key thing, the key factor for you, Daniel, is that these cases were filed a long time ago and they still haven't sold. So one of the, several things could have happened. There was some complications. They weren't able to sell it, but now they're ready to sell, or they just kept it in the family, or uh -huh. third X factor. We don't know, but they're definitely worth a call. I can tell you from experience and what I've seen happen here in this in, in this group, and also previously from other agents. Mm -hmm. This is a strategy that works really, really well because um, a lot of times it's it's basically a complicated case, and now they're ready to sell, or something came up, and and now it's finally no cleared, and the they're PR. comfortable yeah. and ready to move forward. More than likely. Yeah, yeah, and it's a good, okay, okay. it's a simple call. 
You call yeah, them I, up. I just didn't say, know. My, my concern, I got the list now. My concern was like, okay, I'm kind of shooting in the dark here. I don't even know who or what because yeah. I, I hadn't gone in. And I, I guess I should uh, use the resources to the courthouse and, and find out a little bit more about them. Yeah. Right. So, so what, what also what I encourage you is log into probate data. There's a couple of videos in there that you can watch. Go to youtube.com forward slash probate data. It teaches you how to do searches if you want to do that as well. And we'll do one of these next week as well. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So who's ready to find out what they need to do to make the money they want to make? Anyone? Me. Anyone? A couple of you. Okay. Some of you. Ready. All right. So here's what I, here's what I, uh, <laughs> good. All right. So, um, let's see here. Put in the chat, you can either put it in privately or to everyone, depends on your comfort level. Put in the chat what your income goal is for the next 12 months. I can tell you. Tell me, who's this? Clara. Clara, tell me. Um, my uh, um, goal for uh, income, you mean? Yeah. Uh, my goal in general is 147,000 gross. Okay. And that um, I, with my coach, I had kind of gotten down to um, how many leads I need to, how many calls I need to make uh, daily and how many uh, listings and how many closings. Perfect. So I would need at least 21 to 25 closings for the year in order to get that growth. What's your average commission take? What's your average take home after splits and everything? Uh, it's about per deal. Per deal. Seventy five hundred dollars. Seventy five hundred. Okay. All right. So guys, take a pen and paper. Write these things down. Um, what's your average? Your average net take per closed transaction. So average net per closed transaction. And then there's three three uh, percentages I want you to write down. The first one is escrow to close. So um, of all the deals that go into escrow, how many actually end up closing? Because I've been in this situation before. I was, I don't know if you guys know this, but I was a real estate agent for, for a short stint for about a year at the commercial real estate. Um, and I quit when uh, I, I, I lost patience, to be honest with you. I didn't have the, the willpower that you guys have. I, I, I lost patience when I put a $6 million deal on the contract and it fell out of escrow. <laughs> like, what? How does that work? So escrow to close, what's the percentage? Is it 100%? Is it 80? So, so think about easily, like out of 10 deals that I put into escrow, how many close? Eight, seven. So whatever that is, turn into a percentage. Out of the listings that you take, how many, what's the percentage of listings that go into escrow? Write that down. The percentage of listings go into escrow. So if I take 10 listings, do they all go into escrows? And then you put 100%. If seven out of 10 go into escrow, then you put down 70%. And then the last one is appointment to listings. Appointment to listings. How many appointments do I need to go on to get one listing? So if I go on 10 listings and I get 10, if I go on 10 appointments and I get 10 listings, that's 100%. If I go on 10 appointments and I get five listings, that's 50%. You guys with me so far? So three numbers, four numbers actually. What's your average net take home? What's your escrow to close ratio? So how many, how many escrows I, I, I open and how many of those close? And how many listings go into escrow? What's your percentage there? And how many appointments do I need to set to get, uh, to get a listing? What's your percentage there? So Claire, let's keep going with you. You're, do you know what these numbers are for you? The escrow to close? Uh, no, I'll tell you what my, I have my numbers here. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, on a monthly, uh, I would need to add 1.25 listings a month and have 1.25 uh, sale a month. Um, it, uh, it's actually, uh, I would have to have 20 listings uh, a year. And that would- That, that, that close, they all close? So each, so each of your listing uh, go, that goes into escrow ends up, so you close, so 100% action uh, of these deals go through. You don't have anything that falls out of escrow. You don't have any listings. No, have, no right you know, now I don't have any. So, so, so when, when it's something goes into escrow for you, it's 100% done, right? So if you go, it goes into escrow, it's like, it's a done deal 100% yeah. of the time. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. 
And I'm going to show you this calculator when we're, when we're done here. Okay, so now uh, out of the listings that you take, um, how many do 100% of them go into escrow? So let's say you get 10 listings, do all of them go into escrow or do they, do they expire or fall apart? Had in the past, yes. 100%. Okay. I don't have any right now. And of course, with COVID, it's kind of a lot. Yeah, of I get that. <laughs> And then also, how many appointments would you say do you need to go on to, to get one, uh, one listing? So if you went on 10, 10 listing appointments, how many of those would turn into a listing? Let's see. Um, let's see, I would have to make uh, 10 contacts a week, one appointment. Um, one so is, like have one escrow open and one close. Okay, so if you did 10, 10 appointments and you get one, uh, you did 10 appointments and you get one listing, is that so 10% 10, so 10 roughly? Right, right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's look at, let's share my screen here real quick. Yeah, and right now I'm going kind of slow because I've been out for, I was out for quite a while, so. I understand. That happens. Yeah. Okay, so the income goal is 147,000, is that correct? Yes. And the average take home is 7,500, is that correct? Correct. And you said 100% uh, of the escrows uh, that you put in, they close, is that correct? They have, yes. And 100% of the listings that you take the end of an escrow, is that correct? Yes. And then um, out of 10, 10 appointments, you get one listing, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so it looks like to hit your income goal, um, because you're hundred percent over here, these numbers are pretty obvious here, but the interesting here is like the, and you notice I can't, I can't type on these. So there's, there's a formula in here that calculates this for me, for yeah. us, right? Uh, so you need to do 196 appointments uh, a year over the next 12 months. Right. And then, and so that's, that's enough. So let's call it 200. Let's just round it up. Right. So that's 200 appointments over 12 months. Um, so if you divide it 200. Probably about, um, Two, uh, one, yeah, one. So about 17, 17 appointments per month. Yeah. And if you, if you divide that, hold on, let me make this bigger. So if you divide this by this one divided by four, Doesn't so you need about five good. appointments, five appointments per, um, per week. Per week, yeah. So let's say four appointments per week, right? Right. So to get four appointments per week and your ratio is 10%, you need to have, um, yeah, four appointments. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Four. So now here's the thing, guys. So we just, just this quick calculation here. Yeah. Now, Clara, you know what your, uh, you, should, you should all hopefully know what your uh, best channel is for reaching out to people, whether it's phone, mail, mail and phone, whatever the thing is, you need to, you, you know what it takes to get this many appointments. You know what your closing ratio is on the phone, how many contacts you need to make and all that. I have another, a whole other session on that. We can do some other time. But once you figure this out, now you can look at your marketing expenses, your costs and all that, like to get these kinds of appointments, to get these kinds of phone calls, what I need to do to generate $147,000 uh, in income. So you see how this aligns with, and then obviously, hopefully, you know what, what your why is. It goes back to your identity. Mm -hmm. So now we take this whole framework we looked about habits, and you look at, now I have a calculator here that tells me exactly what I need to do. And my why is because I want a better financial future, financial reality, so that I can, whatever your reality is, like for some of you, it's like I can retire better, so I can pay for my kid's college, so I can pay off debt. So whatever your thing is that you want to accomplish and achieve in the next 12 months, that's going to be front and center. And then, you, and then you look at the why, like because of my identity is that I want to be a good provider or I want to be healthy or I want to retire healthy or I want to retire happy or whatever, the, whatever your why is, right? I had someone look at this and she's like, you know, I want to make this money. Why do much this money? I want to make this much money. She was like 250000 She goes, well, I want, to, I want to add a second bedroom to our house and it's going to cost us $100,000. So I go, Great. So the 250,000, a hundred of that is going to go into savings and 150 is just whatever your cost of living. She's like, yeah. Okay. So then imagine what does that bedroom look like? Where do you want to add it? What can you do for free or at low cost right now to look at plants and get excited? 
So she, that was, that was her thing. That was her why. So the reason she wanted that second bedroom was that she wanted to study for her husband. And, and they had talked about it and she was the breadwinner. So they're like, okay, we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm giving examples here and hopefully in your mind, there's something that's going to click. And I know I talked to one of you uh, years ago about vacationing in Hawaii. Uh, and I know, I know who, you know who you are, you're on this call. Um, but, you know, the, the why became really uh, um, clear. So now with this calculator, you can actually start breaking it down. Is there someone here that would like to try their number out and then kind of tell me what their numbers are and we can see what they need to do? And if not, that's okay. This could be, this, this could be private. Um, this recording is being recorded. This webinar is being recorded, yeah. All right, so um, Fabian is saying, I just got two escrow canceled. Patience is my middle name, good one. Uh, would you guys like a copy of this, uh, the slides from before, but also this calculator? Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, um, let's see. Any questions, comments, thoughts, follow-ups, hallucinations, anything? Before we call it a day, uh, plug. Okay, so Lena, Lena, you there? So Lena, I could plug your number in, but I need to know your. I need to know details. Lena, okay. where are you? Okay. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. All right, let's um, let's pull up your number. So your goal is two hundred thousand, right? Right. And what's your average take on per per closed transaction? Oh. Uh, Three percent. So, what is that dollar amount? Um, on well, average, if you look back. I, I'm just jumping on the call. So. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Okay. So, what, what, are, you got, are you seeing my screen right now? I do. So, your if the income goal is two hundred, then what's your average ten, close? Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, about. Mine is about more clo closer to four grand, not okay. seventy five. Okay, now let's look at your escrow to close. So escrow to close means um, if, if, if you put in 10 deals into escrow, how many of them are going to close? 100% of them, 80% of them, half of like, I don't know, what's, what's your, if you look back. Mine have been 100% going in actually okay. so far. I haven't lost any, thank God. Let me walk, knock on some wood. Okay, good. And then listings to going into escrow, is that 100% or is it 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10? That's about, yeah, that's about 8 out of 10. So we'll put 80% here. Now, um, if you went on 10 appointments, how many of them would turn into listings? Probably about six. So 60% appointment to listing, okay. Yeah. Let's see how this number changed. Yeah. So for, so for Clara, it was 10%. So for, so for Clara to make more money, Clara, I would encourage you to improve your listing presentation so that you close more. So you, the more appointments you go on, you gotta close more for listings, right? So if you're 10%, if you took your number up to just 50%, you would have to do fewer appointments and you would make more money faster, right? So you guys see how, when you're honest with yourself about these things, now for, for Lena, it says basically, uh, you need to do 104 appointments over the next 12 months. And okay. if we did the same thing for Lena here, we broke it down and we take 104 divided by 12. That's about eight, eight appointments per month or two a week. And now, Lena, you got to reverse engineer what that looks like for you. Like how many calls do you need to make? How many mailers do you need to do? And if you okay. guys don't know that, that's okay. Keep track of it. At the end of the week, just keep, I made this many calls. I, or at the end of the day, I made 50 calls. I had five contacts and zero prospects. Next day, I made 50 calls, made seven contacts, one prospect. And you just keep track of that every day. And then at the end of the week, you just tally it all up. You go, well, my phone closing ratio to appointment is this much. So I know how many calls you need to make. Or like, uh, I know Deborah is really great on sending out postcards. And she knows like after 10 to 13 postcards or mailings, she'll start seeing phone calls coming in. So she knows like, if I mail all this out and that's my cost for mailing all this out, I can expect this many phone calls and it'll hit my, my income goal. So Deborah, you, you put your income goal with us. You put it on private, so I'll respect that. Um, but do you see how this could work for you as well? This works for everybody. This is a simple sales tool. If you know your ratios, you will have this income. And I learned this uh, from my manager when I was in commercial real estate. He said, what's your income goal? I said, it's uh, a quarter million dollars. He said, okay, your average take is gonna be 15 to $20,000. And then he did the numbers with me. I had, I had zero experience. I was green. I had no idea what I was doing. 
And he said, well, you need to make 500 calls a week. I go, okay, where's the phone? <laughs> and I was just dying for dollars, dying for dollars. He gave me a list and he gave me a territory and that was it. That was it. You know, Can got, we also get a list, a copy of that, uh, please? Of, of the spreadsheet here, the calculator? Yeah, the spreadsheet, please, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'll include that in the, in the email when I send out the replay. Thank you. Okay, so this live, uh, this recording, you will have access to it on, on YouTube channel. Uh, so if you go to youtube.com forward slash probate data, it's gonna be up there in the next hour or two. Um, it's gonna process and I gotta upload it and I gotta add some things to it and then uh, we'll be ready for you guys. Um, the website is youtube.com forward slash probate data. But I'll, I'll email all of you. YouTube.com, okay, let me put it in here forward slash probate. That's it, guys. We're done. Thanks for hanging in there. Hopefully you learned something worth using. And um, I will be sending out a replay here in the next hour or so. Be okay. well. Stay okay. safe. Wash those hands. Have a good Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. Bye. Be well now.